So the concept of entropy is really important in trying to define the importance of specific positions and bases within those positions of a TF binding site. And so we'll start off by discussing absolute entropy. So for the next few slides, we're going to discuss the concept of relative entropy, which is one pretty common way of uh, measuring for given position of your transcription factor binding site within, say, an alignment that you've done uh, between the bound fragments of a TF. Uh, across that single column, relative entropy basically calculates how different is the uh, distribution of bases, so what proportion of the bases you saw were A's, C's, G's, or T's, compared to that that you saw from the control fragments. And so we'll also discuss the concept of entropy, uh, which is related in the sense that entropy calculates, in this case for a given column of your alignment, uh, how random is the choice uh, of a base for any given sequence within that column. Um, and that entropy calculation is again kind of ca calculated on a per column basis from your alignment. And so to get you guys motivated in thinking about what it means for a particular DNA fragment or sequence to be random, uh, and therefore you know motivate our discussion about entropy, uh, here on this slide I've given you guys an example of four different short DNA sequences. What I want you to do is actually just take a few minutes to try to write down some kind of shorthand notation for each of these sequences. Try to write down some kind of code that is a kind of a shortest description of um, what that DNA sequence represents. And so to give you an example, uh, the first sequence is basically uh, eight, uh, eight adenines stuck together. And so in one example of um, of a code you could write, for example, is just A times A, which is you know, another way of just saying A was repeated eight times. And so I want you to try to come up with a different code, or in a similar format, I want you guys to come up with a code that you could use to write down the remaining three DNA fragments. All right, and so here's basically the equation for calculating entropy for a single position in a transcription factor binding site. Uh, alignment. Right? And so the calculation of entropy is pretty straightforward. What you do is that for a single column in your transcription factor binding site, you look at what fraction of the sequences in that alignment uh, have an A or a C or a G or a T. Right? And so basically for each base, you're essentially asking if you were to pick one of those sequences at random for that position of the transcription factor binding site, what's the probability that you would have seen an A, C, G, or T? <clears throat> right, and so those probabilities should uh, sum up to one. And so to calculate entropy, basically for every base, you just multiply the probability of seeing that base by the logarithm of the probability of seeing that base. You add those up, uh, across the four bases, and then you just negate it. And that's basically your entropy. And so shown on the bottom of the slide is an example of calculating the entropy of an eight base uh, DNA sequence. And so what you'll see is that in this eight base uh, DNA sequence, A, G, C, T, T, G, A, C, every base actually appears exactly twice. And so what that means is that every base is present every base occupies about 25% of the input DNA sequence. And so if you look at the entropy calculation, basically uh, because every base is present uh, in 25% of the sequence, basically your P log P calculation becomes two over eight, or 25% times log base two of two over eight. Um, and if you work that out, uh, that basically becomes negative half. And uh, negative half times negative four is just two. And so what I want you to do is following the same uh, following the same equation for calculating entropy, I want you to compute the entropy of these two following sequences. So one of them is AAAA, AAAA, so it's a poly A sequence. 
and the other is AT, 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 AT. So it's essentially a poly AT sequence. So I want you to compute the entropy of those two sequences, see the number that you get, and then I want you to compare it to the entropy value of two that we got on the previous slide for AGCT, TGC. And I want you to take a look and see which sequence got a higher entropy value. So again, entropy in some sense is a measure of randomness. So higher value should mean more ran like a sequence is more random. And I want you to convince yourself that those numbers make sense that then you know the sequence that has the highest entropy value actually does look more random than uh, other sequences that are that have lower entropy value. So hopefully after the last few slides you've got some uh, some sort of idea of what it means for DNA sequence to be random. And so uh, there's a few common ways that uh, you might think about what it means for DNA sequence to be random. So the first of which is you might think it uh, intuitively means uh, a sequence is unpredictable in the sense that the past doesn't predict the future. And so if you think about, for example, like a poly A track sequence, um, if you have a poly A track sequence that has, for example, like a thousand adenines in a row, then essentially after you've seen the like 500th adenine, um, if I asked you, well, what do you think the rest of the sequence is going to look like? You'd probably say, well, there's probably going to be another 500 adenines and you'd be right. And so in that sense, a poly A track is highly predictable. Um, and so it's not random. Whereas, for example, if you just, um, you know, if you, uh, if say, for example, you were making up, if you had decided to make up a random DNA sequence and suppose when you make up this random DNA sequence for every base that you pick, you just randomly pick one of the four uh, bases at, you know, with equal probability uh, for each base in the, in the whole sequence, then it's unpredictable in the sense that even if you saw the first half of the uh, sequence that I, that I generate, um, it wouldn't really allow you to accurately predict what the exact sequence of the next half would look like. Um, another way of thinking about randomness of DNA sequences is that random DNA sequences are not efficient to, you can't really efficiently come up with some way of writing it down easily, right? And so again, if you think back to the case of a poly A track, if I gave you a, a DNA sequence that was, you know, a thousand adenines long, and I asked you to come up with some kind of efficient way of writing it down, you would, you know, probably come up with something like the, like the, uh, <clears throat> phrase or the term like 1000 times A or something to represent the fact that there's a thousand adenines. Um, but you wouldn't be able to come up with that easy of a, or that short of a, a <clears throat> phrase or, a, or a, uh, a notation for a completely uniformly random sequence. Um, another more subtle but more kind of accurate way of thinking about random sequences is that um, random sequences essentially have a lot of inf have more information in them in the sense that uh, in the same way that a poly A track if you've seen 500 adenines seeing uh, you know 600 of them 600 adenines in a row doesn't tell you a lot more than seeing 500 in a row um, it in the, in the same way, random sequences are a little bit more informative in the sense that even after you've seen 500 randomly chosen bases, uh, that doesn't tell you a whole lot about the precise sequence of next 500 bases if everything is chosen really equally at random. And so random sequences have more information in them. Um, and finally, so the, the question about entropy really comes back to the question of, well, how, how random is the, the sequence I'm looking at or how unpredictable it is? Um, and so that, that's in essence what uh, the entropy calculation that you're making before really really measures is just how random or unpredictable your, your sequence is.